Russia's first class of fifth-generation fighter the Su-57 Felon has been increasingly proactively marketed for export, and as one of just three fighters of its generation in production worldwide today it has the potential to offer clients a range of revolutionary new aerial warfare capabilities. The fighter's appeal to foreign clients is likely to have been increased considerably by the entirely unique level of combat testing it has been put through in the Ukrainian theater, with operations having included air defense suppression, air-to-air -air combat, and operations in heavily defended enemy airspace, as well as a range of precision strike missions using both internally and externally deployed missiles. This is particularly significant since high-level sources from some interested countries, such as India, have specifically highlighted the need to assess the aircraft's service record in the Russian Air Force before placing orders. Speaking at Airshow China in Zhuhai on November 13, CEO of the Russian state-run arms export conglomerate Rosoborwan Export Alexander Mikheyev confirmed that the firm already signed the first contracts for the Su-57, fueling considerable speculation as to which the first clients for the aircraft could be. An assessment of the five most likely countries to purchase the Su-57, and their requirements for the fighter class, is given below. Algeria has shown strong signs of planning an acquisition of Su-57 fighters, with Algerian military officials having been seen holding models of the aircraft in recent years, while a collage of the fighter was installed at the country's defense ministry in 2020. The first unit of the fighters is reportedly intended to replace modernized MiG-25 Foxbat interceptors which were retired in June 2022. The scale at which Russia has invested in expansion of production lines to support the program, which will allow for production of many more aircraft by 2027 than the 76 ordered by the Russian Defense Ministry, indicates that an export deal may have been reached some time ago. Algeria has strongly prioritized its aerial warfare capabilities since the NATO assault against neighboring Libya in 2011 and has recently continued to increase defense spending levels in the face of escalating threats from NATO members and their regional partners. Algeria has a long history of acquiring advanced Russian military equipment before other foreign clients, ranging from the MiG-25 fleet acquired from 1978, to the Panzer SM air defense system acquired from 2018. While previously seven Arab republics were significant clients for Russian military equipment, including Syria, Iraq, Egypt, Yemen, Sudan and Libya, today Algeria remains the only one not to have been destabilized by Western intervention. This in turn has fueled a growing consensus that it is likely to be a future target. Providing potential for further orders beyond an initial squadron, the enhanced Su-57M is expected to later compete with the Chinese J-35 to replace the Su-30MKA and MiG-29 as the backbone of the fleet in the 2030s. The Indian Air Force has long been expected to be the leading client for the Su-57, much as it has been for most of Russia and the Soviet Union's prominent prior fighter classes. India was the first country to order Soviet fourth-generation fighters, and purchased MiG-29s in 1982, after having for years operated increasingly advanced variants of the MiG-21 and MiG-23. In 2002 it would become the first country to acquire Russian, 4-plus generation fighters with the acquisition of the Su-30MKI, which was at the time much more capable than any fighter in the Russian Air Force itself.
The heavily customized fighter used of the Su-37's N011M radar, the first phased array radar ever integrated onto an export fighter, as well as the Su-35's controlled canards, AL-31FP engines and thrust vectoring nozzles. India was previously a partner in the Su-57's development, and was set to receive extensive technology transfers and joint ownership of the program, although the country eventually pulled out of the deal which is widely considered to have been overly ambitious. India has continued to show a strong interest in either license production or off-the-shelf purchases of the Su-57, with discussions on a license production deal reported to be underway in February 2023. The country has acquired over 270 Su-30 MKIs, and with a fighter fleet well under the strength planned by the Indian Defence Ministry a comparably large-scale acquisition of the Su-57 could make up the shortfall. It is notable that the very high costs of manufacturing the Su-30 MKI in India, and integrating a range of foreign technologies onto them, has made their costs comparable to those of the new fifth-generation fighters, meaning off-the-shelf Su-57 purchases from Russia could be seen as highly cost-effective. The need for a fifth-generation fighter is expected to grow as China is expected to continue to rapidly expand its fleet, export fifth-generation fighters to Pakistan, and field a sixth-generation fighter from around 2030. The Su-57 is considered by far Vietnam's most likely choice to modernize its fleet, with the class particularly long range allowing it to patrol disputed waters in the South China Sea from bases in the country. Vietnam has notably long declined to acquire shorter ranged fighters such as MiG-29s due to its strong preference for this. The aircraft's very high versatility also allows it to replace both the Su-22 and the Su-27, and thus increase commonality within the fleet by bringing the total number of fighter classes to just two. Reports first emerged in mid-2017 from Vietnamese paper Dat Viet that Vietnam's armed forces planned the acquisition of 12 to 24 Su-57s from around 2030. Further reports to this effect emerged in early January 2019. The country has sought to remain neutral in the ongoing conflict between China and the United States which combined with America's unwillingness to provide top-end aircraft has left it unlikely to acquire fifth-generation fighters from either of the two leading powers. The acquisitions of F-35s by neighboring Singapore and Australia, and deployments of both Chinese and American fifth-generation fighters in the region, has raised the significant possibility that acquiring Su-35s will not be seen as adequate to secure Indonesia's airspace, with the fighters being technologically behind. As Indonesia continues to rapidly strengthen defense ties with Russia, with new arms acquisitions requests reported and unprecedented exercises launched, a significant possibility remains that the country will acquire Su-57s instead of Su-35s. Extensive efforts to sanctions proof the Indonesian economy have paved the way for the country being able to make such acquisitions despite Western threats of economic warfare if it does so. In October 2024 South Korean government sources reported that North Korean combat aviation pilots had been dispatched to Vladivostok in the Russian Far East the previous month, raising the possibility that they may have begun training on modern fighters. With North Korean sources having expressed significant concern regarding the deployment of F-35s in South Korea and Japan, Acquiring Su-57s to support the country's increasingly advanced ground-based air defenses would provide an effective means of countering this.
While previously the UN arms embargo was a primary factor preventing North Korea from being considered a leading potential client for new Russian fighter classes, Moscow's newfound willingness to ignore or search for loopholes in this opens the possibility of North Korea making acquisitions of Su-57, which depending on the size of its revenues from arms exports to Russia could potentially be done in significant numbers.